Hello there. I am Heidi. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you are here. Have you been told to avoid spinal flexion by your doctor and at the same time been told strengthen your core? A lot of times I've had clients that tell me, how am I supposed to strengthen my core without doing sit-ups, right? Well, you can do that in so many ways. Um, and maybe you just don't like sit-ups and want to find a different way to strengthen your overall core, your transverse abdominus, your rectus abdominus. Basically, the muscles that wrap around your tummy, your postural muscles, those are your transverse abdominus. We are going to work on that today with five exercises. Are you ready? Let's do this. So we are going to start on the back today. Uh, I want you to feel that your spine is settled into the mat and that you feel natural curves in your back. So you're not smashing your back. You're not arching. You're not contracting, right? Just feel the natural curves of your spine here. So if you feel the natural curves, you're going to feel that you maybe have a little bit of a space into your low back, okay? So right there, what I want you to do is maintain the position of your pelvis. We're gonna go into toe taps for your first exercise. You're gonna bring one leg up to tabletop without changing the pelvis. You're gonna bring the other leg up to meet it. I like to squeeze my knees together for tabletop. And at the same time, we're looking to really work in a neutral position of the spine. So I always like to create the imagery that you are sandwiching the spine between your abdominals and your back extensors are kind of working hand in hand together. So we're going to hold that position and hinging out of the hip, you're going to tap the toe down and bring it up. And I want you to alternate that. You'll tap and bring it up. Now, a big part about recruiting the right muscle group is the breath. You're going to inhale to reach out of the hip and then exhale to bring the leg up. I want you to imagine that the exhale is the preface of the movement, right? So I'm actually gonna breathe out to recruit the leg coming back up, yes? Let's do a couple more. And as you're doing that, you're being very mindful that the back is not extending, right? And you're also not smashing your back. We're looking to work in the strongest position of that spine, which is that natural curvature. So you're really using your abs and back together. At the same time, I'm visualizing that I'm kind of marrying my ribs down towards my pelvis. So I'm pressing the back of the ribs into the mat, keeping a connection of my powerhouse the entire time. Very nice, that's your toe taps. Take a second, hug your knees into your chest. Maybe give yourself a break. And our next exercise is going to be dead bugs. And so all the rules still apply here. We're gonna stay on our, on our back, on the mat here, in our neutral spine. We're gonna bring the legs back to tabletop. And this time we're gonna incorporate our arms and change the positioning of the legs a bit. So I'm gonna stamp my shoulder blades into the mat. And right here where the arms are at, sometimes what tends to happen is we let our ribs go, right? If you look at my ribs, I'm just extending. I want you to think like you have a clip right at the top of the ribs and you're gonna pinch the clip shut to stamp the ribs into the mat. And you wanna maintain that connection. Then from here, we're gonna take opposite arm from leg. I'm gonna extend one leg as I reach the opposite arm overhead. And then I bring it all back to the top. And I'm gonna alternate that movement, extending my right leg and my left arm, and then I return. So again, same concept applies. I'm sandwiching my spine between my ab muscles and my back muscles here without the pelvis changing. And as my arm reaches overhead, I'm being very mindful that I'm pulling down on my rib in opposition. So I'm gonna hold here for a second. And I want you to think of this downward pull of the rib cage as the arm reaches up. 
So you never want to disengage and let everything go. What's happening? It's kind of defeating the purpose, right? So we want to find that connection and then bring everything back to the top. Let's do that one more time. So we reach out of the hip, out of the shoulder, bring it back. And then last time, reaching out of the hip, out of the shoulder, bring it back and then rest, yeah? So those are two exercises to do supine there. That's really gonna work the trunk of your torso here. So, so mostly your transverse abdominis, right? So now let's target those lateral flexors. You're gonna roll onto your side. And this is actually one of my favorite exercises um, that I do in a lot of my Pilates sessions that I teach. So you're going to lay on that bottom arm and you're going to set up in a little banana shaped position here. The feet are going to be slightly forward of the body and we're going to set up for what is called side lying leg lifts. It's exactly what it is. So you want to be mindful that you're engaged in the lower part of that body. So I like to tell my clients to take their hand on the hip and push the hip away from the rib. And I want you to feel how the lower part of your waistband reacts, right? So if you're just hanging out on your mat, really not feeling any sense of connection, by just taking that tactile cue of pressing the hip away from the rib, you're gonna feel that really beautiful connection underneath that waistband here. Instantly, you've connected that lateral line of the body. And then you're going to take this hand in front of you for support. Feet are just slightly forward of your hips, a little banana shape. And then from there, using those obliques there, we're going to raise the legs away from the floor. And then from there, keep that active and just lower down just to hover the feet. So this is taught many different ways, yes? My goal for you is to keep both sides of the waistband engaged as you reach the toes out beyond the mat. So you're thinking of a length here. And at the same time, you're going to feel a nice side crunch on that body. So if you're doing it correctly, you're going to feel the bottom side of your waistband kind of press into the mat as the legs rise. And then as they lower, you'll feel the opposite. Other people sometimes will teach this by keeping everything pulled up and just separating the legs from the torso, right? But I love to just feel that connection to my obliques, yes? So you'll do, you can do anywhere from 10 to 15 repetitions, whatever's in your wheelhouse. And then you'll come up and always do that on the other side. So I want to do that with you because you'll notice when you're going into the other side, there is um, kind of like a difference, right? Our obliques, whenever you do side work, sometimes it feels super easy on one side and super challenging on the other. That's just how we're made. We're asymmetrical human beings. So again, I'm going to press my hip away from my rib cage feeling that connection. And then again, I'm reaching through the toes, lifting and lowering. So this is actually, I don't know if it looks harder, but it feels harder for me, right? And that's totally normal. And your goal over time is to be as light on this hand as possible to where you won't even need it. You can send the arm up to the sky, right? So you're really feeling that great engagement through the side body. You want to watch again the rib flare. We don't want to let the ribs go. And then at the same time, right, if you let go of the ribs and you let go of the pelvis, your QL muscle, that the side of the back, basically it runs along the side of your spine. It's going to start to fire and try to take over for you. We don't want that happening. So we want to make sure we keep that powerhouse nice and engaged. Yes. All right. That was exercise three. Moving on to number four. You're going to come up onto your knees. Okay, friends. So basically this next exercise is going to be almost exactly what you were doing on your back in your dead bugs. But now we're going to do opposite arm from leg in a kneeling position. So now we're going to be working, and we were working them before, your oblique slings. Yes? So from here, we are going to... Send one leg straight back in line with our hip, right? Being mindful that we're not allowing our pelvis to go. We're going to send it straight back. And then at the same time, we're going to send the opposite arm 
out in line with the shoulder. So again, we're sandwiching our spine with our ab and our back muscles here. We're keeping the hips square and the shoulders square. So I'm really feeling a lot of work from my left supporting leg up into my right supporting shoulder. Yes, yeah? so there's, it's like I'm wearing a seat belt here. That's your sling system there, yes? From here, we're gonna maintain this position as we draw the hand and knee into the center and then we extend it out. So as I'm doing this, I'm trying to maintain the position of my spine as I move the limbs through the space. So it's like they're not even moving. My powerhouse is connected. My torso is strong. Woohoo! We'll bring it down and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So from here, I'm gonna shoot my leg out, making sure my pelvis is still square. I'm gonna send my opposite arm overhead and just feel that work there for a moment, yes? So again, pushing down out of the left hand into the right knee, and we're gonna take it in with the moving limbs and out. You can breathe in to bring the limbs together and breathe out to send them away. Do a couple more, just being very mindful that we're stable in the pelvis. We're being mindful that the bottom shoulder is not lifting into the ear. So many variables. And then bring it down, take a moment, rest it back. Woohoo! So that was exercise four. Last one, here we go. Okay, so in my opinion, this is gonna be the hardest of them all. <laughs> so we're here, we're putting it all together. We're in our quadruped position, so all fours, yes. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. That's the biggest rule of thumb, right? Neutral spine, so natural curves of the back. So we're not tucking, we're not extending. We're right here, the neck is long. Now, from here, I'm gonna tuck my toes under. And from that position, I'm gonna hover my knees. Hello, abs, hello, back muscles. From here, as I still sandwich my spine, I'm gonna keep my knees hovering. I'm gonna do a little donkey kick with one leg. Do a donkey kick with the other leg and bring it down. Now, you can do that one, then the other, and lower your knees. Or if you're feeling very adventurous, you're going to hover the knees. We're going to lift, bring it down, lift, and continue to go. Lift without changing the position of your spine. Holy cow. This one's a doozy. Really, really good, though. We built up to it. Do one more set just to feel it. Press it down, press it back. Woo! There you go, friends. So, five core exercises, no sit ups required at all for you. Let me know how you feel about it. Let me know if you tried it, like it, leave me a comment. If you liked it a lot, share the love, share it with your friends, and please subscribe, and I will see you next time.